Oh guys, how's it going? Cobra1386 here, back for another custom LEGO minifigure review. Now I know it's been a few months since my last video. Before we start, I'd like to apologise for that. I have been at uni, um, so I haven't had time to do any of that, but I'm home for a week now, so I'm going to record a bunch of videos to release over the next month or couple of months. So the next few videos you see will be like all recorded on the same day. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into having a look at these custom Suicide Squad minifigures. I had originally intended to do this video in conjunction with the DVD release of the film, but I hadn't got all the figures on time and then I went to uni and I just didn't get around to doing it. So I apologise about it being late, but yeah, let's get on with looking at the individual figures. With our first figure working from left to right along the back, we have the Deadshot figure. Now in the film, Deadshot was played by Will Smith, for those of you who don't know. I personally think he did really well in the film. Now, you might notice that this is more of a comic accurate suit than a movie accurate suit. And that is partially because of the price of the movie accurate suit. Now personally, I think it's a shame that the it's something that affects my ability to do the reviews on this figures is how expensive it is because the individual deadshot figure of Will Smith is around to get a decent one's about 25 pounds sort of 30 dollars sort of area so it's a lot of money to get one which is a shame but this one was the same price as all the others it was about five pounds which is personally I think a lot more reasonable I have brought a custom sniper rifle to go with it, as he didn't come with any weapons. And I brought a custom head to put on instead of the mask, if you want to have him without the mask on as well. And I got them from Firestar Toys. I will put a link to that website in the description if you want to do that for yourself. Moving on to the actual figure then, you can see it has some great detail on the torso. I love the little deadshot symbol in the centre of the chest. All the pockets and pouches and the way that the printing transfers very well between the body and the top of the legs. Then he has got some detail on the bottom of the uh, need ball joints as well. And he has the dual moulding legs with the bottom half of them being silver. Now moving around to the side of the figure you can see it does have printing on the arms. You can see he's got his wrist guns printed on there as well as a small what I presume is a small ammo belt around his shoulder. And then you can see he does have exactly the same thing on the other side. Now on the back of the figure you can see he's got the continuation of the pouches around on the back. I think it's a shame that on the back they don't continue onto the belt of the leg piece the same way they do on the front. Then you can see they've also got more of the silver and gold details on the back of the torso. And then here is the figure with the mask on instead of the skin colour head. And you can see that the really the main difference between this mask and the one he uses in the film, apart from it being silver instead of white, is that in the movie the eyepiece is on his left hand side as opposed to his right hand side. But given the price difference I think this, for me at least, is a perfectly fine substitute for the minifigure. Next up here we have the Enchantress figure. Now I think this figure has really well captured how the character looks in the film. I think the only thing I can say that I'd improve on this figure is maybe making it like a bit more dirt dirty. Because in the film, if you have seen it or if you've seen the trailers, you'll know she looks almost like she's covered in mud and dirt, which she does in the film as well. And small spoiler, this, as you may know, is like the main villain of the film. So she's not technically a member of the Suicide Squad, but is still a key character in the film. Now the detailing on the torso and the legs are brilliant. I love the way they've got like all the symbols and everything printed on. I'm not so sure about how they've done the toes, but I like the fact that they've attempted to capture the fact that she does wear, just have bare feet throughout the film. And then on the side here, you can see that she does have arm printing on her arms. It's, I think it's like a chainmail type of stuff she has on her arms and she does have the same on the other side as well. Just like so. 
And now moving to the back of the figure, you can see I have just removed the hairpiece so you can see the details on a bit more. And again, I think they have captured the way that the character looks really well with all the details on this figure. They have got a bit of the dirt on here, but it's not quite as much as he has in the film, but they have tried. And uh, you can see they've got like the symbol in the middle of the back as well. And there we are for one final look at the Enchantress figure before we now move on to Katana. Before we go any further with the figures here, I'd just like to apologise for the lighting in this video, but the light I normally use for my videos is at uni, which is the other end of the country, and I couldn't really bring it back with me on the plane. So I'm having to use a different light, which I have here at home, so it's got a slight yellow tinge to it, I'm afraid. So that does slightly affect the colours of the figures, if you just bear that in mind while we're looking at them, and again, I'd like to apologise for that. And so here is Katana, the third figure of this group. She has a bit more of a minor role in the film, if you've seen it. She's not actually a member of the squad itself. She works for um, Amanda Waller in a kind of tertiary sense of the fact that she works with Rick Flagg. So she kind of helps keep the squad under control, as it were. You can see she's got her signature Katana here, which some of you may know, traps the souls of its victims. The printing on the chest piece, I think, perfectly captures the sort of almost like combat armour she wears in the film. And then her mask and hair also perfectly represent the way she looks. And then the dual moulded legs as well, a bit lacking on detail, but they do the job perfectly fine. And then you can see here that her right arm is red with some silver printing on it. It's got like some armour padding on and maybe like a gauntlet piece on there as well. And then the left arm is just plain silver. The back of the figure then just continues on with the combat armour design from the front, just adding a few pockets onto the back as well. And here is one final look at the Katana figure before we move on to Captain Boomerang. So here we are at the custom boomerang figure. This one is personally one of my favourite characters from the film, played by Jai Courtney. It's just the way the character works with the others in the film is just brilliant. Um, and you can see he's got the captain uh, kind of like sweatshirt on over the top of the t-shirt. He's got his beanie with the boomerang symbol. Um, the legs are plain black which is a bit of a shame because he wears jeans in the film, so I mean if they'd been like a grey-blue colour that would have been more accurate. I might change them for a custom pair of jeans at some point. Then if we turn the figure around, you can see that from the side here he does have spare boomerangs on like the top part of his arms. This is on both sides and it's exactly the same so I won't show you the other side. And you can also get a better look of how the trench coat he wears fits on here as well. And now I've just taken the trench coat off to show you the back of the figure. I can't comment on how accurate this is because in the film you don't see the back of him without his big coat on so I don't know how accurate it is but I do like the printing on here. I think these stars on here are meant to be maybe like throwing stars. And uh, here's a look at what the cape looks like when it's not on the minifigure. And then here we are back at the front of the figure. I just want to quickly show you I did buy myself a small custom uh, beer can because throughout the film he's constantly like taking sips out of his beer that he has it on like a special pocket on his belt in like the most random moments. One of my favourite parts of the film. So I just picked that up also from Firestar Toys. So next up here we have the Diablo figure. This one definitely being another one of my favourite characters in the film. And this minifigure itself is definitely probably my second favourite out of the set of my favourite figure being the Joker, which we will see in a minute. I just love like the detailing they've got with the tattoos on the face of this minifigure. They are very accurate to how he has them in the film. And then they've even got like the Diablo name tag on his jacket. I know it's reasonably basic printing on the torso it's still very 
accurate as to how it looks in the film. And here we are at the back of the figure. You can see he has like his um his gang's uh like name initials tattooed on the back. I don't really know what to call it. It's like a graffiti style initials on the back, and then he has also got the like club's logo on the back of his torso with the lines from the front of the jacket continued on the back as well. And then there is no printing on the arms, so they're just plain grey. And there is one final look at the Diablo minifigure of the set. I also forgot to mention he does have printing on like the front of his feet to represent the shoes that he wears in the film. And then the small bit of fire in his hand because obviously his power is like fire and elemental in that sort of sense. And here we are at the Harley Quinn figure. This is probably my favourite character actually in the film, but minifigure wise, I think this isn't as good a representation as it could be. There are definitely some tattoos missing and the legs could definitely have more detail on them. They've got the grey and then the white for the boots and then the stockings are should be really like a fishnet, but they just shaded them all in grey. Which I suppose I can kind of understand, but yet again... I kind of wish I'd spent a little bit more to get the figure that has a bit more detail, but it is quite a bit more to do that. It does still have the heart tattoo under the right eye still, and it does have the uh, daddy's little monster on the t-shirt. I did buy a custom baseball bat to put with the Harley Quinn figure because she does have a baseball bat as her weapon in the film and the revolver in her other hand did come with the figure. And then to the back you can see the red and blue theme continues. You can get a bit of a better shot at the way the hair's done. I think it's a bit too sudden, it should have been faded through a bit more with the blue and the red into the hair. And I think the hair needs to be really more of a white than a blonde. And um, it does have the property of Joker in gold on the back. So apart from like the details with the stockings and some of the details with the tattoos, this is a great figure. And last but not least, we have the Joker minifigure played by Jared Leto in the film. Um, a lot of people really disliked this portrayal of the Joker, but I thought it was actually quite good. I know a lot of people will probably shout at me for that, but... I feel like people haven't really given him enough screen time to judge him properly on how he is as a Joker. I think what we've seen so far is actually quite good, um, considering the different twist he's putting on it. And uh, yeah, actually to the minifigure, I love all the tattoos they've put on this figure. Um, I will show you the back, because it's got tattoos on the back as well in a minute when I take the trench coat off. Um, then he has the Arkham on his uh, like uh, tracksuit trousers he's wearing. The Tommy gun again is an additional piece that I brought to go with it because in one of the scenes he does use a machine gun but I couldn't find a golden one so I thought a Tommy gun would fit in just as well. On the right arm here you can see he does have the face which he has there but obviously on the hands there isn't any printing it's way too small for anything to do but he does have the purple hand on this side to represent the one purple glove he wears in the scene that this figure is for. And then on the other arm, he's got the uh, ha-ha-has all down his arm, as he does in the film. And this is the hand which is holding the machine gun, and would have a smiley face on it if um, there was any printing on the hands. And then here I've taken the trench coat off, so you can see all the tattoos on the back. One of my favourite tattoos on the back of this figure is actually the one at the top. You can see it actually says frown, but it's like tattooed upside down, so it's like... Turn the frown upside down. I think that's quite a cool uh, little um, tattoo, the way that he's put that on. But, um, yeah, the detail on this figure is really great. And, um, yeah, so uh, now we're going to wrap up this Suicide Squad custom minifigure review. So this has been a review of these Suicide Squad squad custom minifigures. Now I know some of you might say, um, where's the Killer Croc figure? I actually brought a Killer Croc figure, but somehow in between making this video and the figures 
arriving, my killer clock figure has disappeared. Yeah, I have uh, no idea where it's gone, but if I manage to find it in between finishing this video and editing it, I will add a bit onto the end, reviewing that figure as well. And um, yeah, so that's it for today's custom minifigure video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to see more Lego videos just like this one, along with a few gaming videos which I'm now starting to bring into the channel. Um, but don't worry, they will not replace the Lego videos at all. I'll just try and stagger them as much as possible. So yeah, uh, this has been Cobra1386, and I will see you guys in the next video.